I thought I had it all planned out. Nobody was going to hear me. Nobody was going to know. And my mother just had this feeling that she needed to, you know, wake up and see if everything was okay. That voice is what saved my life. I remember this one time in the eighth grade where this group of kids thought it would be funny to moo at me in the hallway. That is something that's always stuck with me. I tore myself down a lot. I looked at myself and I compared myself to the world and to others around me and I just thought, you know, I will never be as pretty or as, you know, skinny or as perfect as these other people. I just thought of myself as a very ugly, stupid person who didn't deserve anything, really. I wasn't worth it. I wasn't good enough. By the time I was maybe 15, 16, I think that voice in my head was constantly telling me that nobody likes you, nobody would care if you were alive or dead. That was the only thing I could think about. It's almost like there wasn't any emotion anymore. It was like it was what I had to do. It was the only option. I was then taken to a hospital where I was treated for about a month. And I learned a lot of things about myself and it was really hard. It ended up being exactly what I needed. I had a lot of what's called negative self-talk. People can be telling you the nicest things, but it didn't matter because I didn't think that way of myself. Those negative voices and all these things are definitely depression, and it was something that I didn't know that I had. The hospital worked with me a lot, trying to find the right medication, the right dose, all of those technical things. But I also learned a lot of things that I could do for me. A lot of, you know, understanding when I was feeling triggered by something, and then finding healthy ways to release that anger and that sadness and the, that frustration. I think sometimes people think like, you're in the hospital, so you're better. And you know, obviously there, I was in a, a way better place than I was before I was in the hospital, but there was a lot of work that I needed to do. So moving forward, there was a lot of therapy that I went to by myself, a lot of talk therapy that I had with my parents, just, just getting me to open up even about little things. And that's when I really gained a love and a relationship with God. Before I stopped praying, because I didn't think anybody was listening. I didn't think anybody cared. I just, I felt inclined this one day when I decided that let's just try this again. Why not? And I think having that open mind is eventually what led me to finally listen to what my Heavenly Father was actually saying. I remember asking him, you know, why did you stop this from happening? Why do you care? You haven't cared before. Why do you care now? And I remember I had a lot of prayers answered and the biggest thing I heard was, I care and I always have and I always will. And that's when I think I realized the most that um, I'm important and that, you know, if any other person in the world says that they don't care, they don't, they don't love me, they don't know me, at least I know that, um, that God does.